Welcome to our third tutorial video about mixing and mastering. This time with the topic first steps on a mixing project. So I have prepared something here. You see I want to import some audio tracks and the program asked me if I want to take it on one track or on different or separate tracks. So I would prefer to put all the files on separate tracks. So now he asked me about some options to import the files. The first option is uh, to put the files in the, in the pro project folder. Yes, check it please because when you delete the, the old folder then you don't got the audio files. So right now you got the audio files in your project folder and can archivate the folder after working on this mixing project. The next checkbox is copy and convert the files if they're necessary. Yes, please check it because you wanna convert the files to your project settings, not the project settings to your files. So please check it. Then you have the opinion to split the files like uh, audio left, audio right or you can chose some, some, some um, names for the audio tracks but we don't want to use it. We want to put it in. You have that, a checkbox to um, never ask again but if you sometimes need a other adjustment it's better to get asked because when you check this box and go lost and you have need many time to find or, or to disable this checked or to uncheck it yeah so okay i would put okay in it and import the files you see it right now now i have import all the files and you see uh, the next point of our list is to rename all the files correctly. So we have here the, the, the name of the, the original audio file was snare 21 and snare 25. So I rename it in snare 1, snare 2 because when you have around about 50 or 100 audio files so you get a little bit confused when you, you, when you search especially file in your project folder that's really really important you can you can mark it with some some some, some colors like red or blue but i i use it like the normal and standard colors here like the gray and all that stuff so make this for for all your audio tracks i do it only here at the example for four tracks so like snare one snare two shaker one shaker two at the next step please create folders so i would prefer to create folders for drums for vocals for your fx for maybe the synthes and i show it like this I prepared um, before recording the video and we have right now all the, the drum tracks there are only drum tracks percussion tracks like kick drums snare bongos claps hi-hat shakers and all that stuff and put it all in the folder drums so then you can put a, a under folder in the in the main folder like hats so I have created here heads and we put all heads in it like the cybles, like the crash and like the high ends and all that stuff. It's really important so you can drop up or drop down the folders. You can make your under folder like from drums like hi-hats or snare or, or shakers 
So when you have many, many uh, files from one instrument, like we have five snares and you want to layer that, it's better to, to uh, make a subfolder and put it in the drums folder. So and then with a, I would prefer to take another folder like here. Vocals and all that stuff. So you can put in your vocals. And then you have all. Right now I would show you some routine settings of my workstation and some helpfully ideas about the routing. So you have here in this project my input channels, the audio channels, the group channels, and the output channels. Important is that you name it right, like here, shaker 1, shaker 2, and you have here the routing settings. Rosetta is my digital DAAD converter. It's the Apogee Rosetta 800 and you see I have renamed my groups like drums, snare, vocals and I do the same for the output channels. You see the drums goes in the output drums here. The snare goes in the output snare the vocals and the output vocals and on and on and on and on. That's really important so um, you can make some mix settings in Cubase. Right now we got all audio tracks but I have the idea to make separate tracks like only the inputs, groups and outputs and one setting for only the audio channels, like here. Okay. So that's my final mix track here. It, uh, this is because I work with analog hardware at the mix and at the mastering. So and I record the signal who's coming in from my analog gear to my sequencer like Cubase. That's then my final mix after analog processing. So the next step to listen up first at the mix. I set the faders all at zero. Right now in the pannings too. So just listen up to your mix and you got here your audio tracks and when you listen up you can move the fader and adjust the volume and adjust the panning like left or right. So for percussion it's necessary to pan one hi-hat left or one hi-hat right uh, or um, some, some drums or bongos or overheads and all that stuff. You can pan that here right now but don't forget if you pan it too much to the side you don't hear it on a mono speaker like smartphone, like tablet, PCs or um, the club systems. Uh, the most club systems are work like mono. So when you you have to know that when you pan it too much at the outside, in, in Cubase is, the, is this really 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 uh, good because the maximum outside I can put a maximum outside 100. So you have 100% left, 100% right. So, and I would, um, I told you that it's better to, when you wanna have the signal in the middle, it's better to pan it maximum 65, maximum on our side. 
so you can show it right 65 so then you got the signal in the middle you can or some 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 um, some Or, or a portion of this needle signal you got in the middle so that's really important to know it of course you can put some synthes or effects um, straight 100% on a sides or a left or on the right side or on both so but you have to know that when you put it too much, you don't hear it in the middle, you don't hear it on a smartphone, you don't hear it on a, on a um, club system and all that stuff. That's, that's really, 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 really important to know because the most, most mixes or ma uh, masters I, I've made I have to correct the, the stereo panorama because um, when I press my mono button on my system most thing are fall off that's the problem and then the customers or the artists are wondering why some instruments are not in the mix if they hear it over her smartphones or tablets and all that that's the reason why so you think that only 60 65 maximum to the outside 65 persons important too is the gain level but the gain level when you get the audio tracks or when you record the audio tracks so when you put down the gain level or when you do the record level from the audio signal is too low the signal noise difference gets smaller because you have um, an, a really really low noise floor on your equipment when you record something you got some noises you got some some basic noises and when you record a signal too low the problem is that the difference between recording signal and noise signal get lower and lower and lower and lower and then when you compress after recording the file the difference get lower and lower and lower and lower and then you have some problems because you have the noise signal and the recording signal that's what we don't want to have so you don't have a fixed rule to gain an instrument in but I would prefer so around between minus 6 and minus 2 DB full scale because then you have 2 dB headroom if you record uh, with 24 bit yeah so 2 0 dB full scale and then we can compress it uh, after recording or put some equalizer on it and some dynamic processing that's why we need a headroom right now I want to explain you some about the insert effects so I show you this insert chain that's from a customer project from three years ago like there was a, 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 a guitar track and the customer comes for mm, around two months three months ago and and asked me if I can restore the settings from old song and I said it's no problem in the digital world it works when you have analog gear it's really hard to restore some settings because um, in the most cases you have some um, slide putties you can't uh, like, like this one I'll show you an example maybe 
have a tube tag. Okay, well, that would be raster. Um, yeah, you have slide parties, and that's the problem. Yeah, see, um, you can restore it like on a millimeter exactly, and one millimeter or two millimeter can be uh, other result at the end. So that's the problem when you have one knob. It's no problem to take a picture or do all that stuff. But when you work with many, many other gears, you have the problem that because you have 500,000 knobs. And if you really want to take a photo from every knob, oh no, I don't, I don't think so. So um, that's a thing on between the digital and all it. But I think that's my opinion. I look sounds much better than digital. And I don't think that anything would change in the next years. So here's my insert chain. I got my compressor. There's only some equalizer settings. Um, and this cheap tag equalizer. Another equalizer. And my guitar two rack. So we don't have a fixed rule to put in the compressor first or equalizer first. I would prefer at first a pre EQ on 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz because the human ear hears only from 20 to 20 kilohertz. So we don't need. The frequencies under it so we can cut it off and then um, sometimes or most times I have my settings like this I have an EQ before compressor and an EQ after the compression because before the compression I wanna told my compressor compressor um, what kind of signal comes in have it and, uh, what kind of signals when I when I put it in so when I uh, um, should I want to um, put a signal in with many bass then I go up my equalizer and put in some bass and then I know the compressor gets at first at the base and get the, the high frequency away so um, yeah and after the compression if I like my sound I say okay yeah but mm, I think so after the compression oh fuck I think the signal needs a little bit more high so I can boost it or or take some from the highs, yeah. So whatever you want, that's only to to um, it's only to influence the signal like however you want. So if you made your panorama settings and your gain settings, then you can make a mix down or make some effects or some equalizers some compressions on on them the separate tracks and then when you think hey that's a good mix then you have to bounce it so when you make the mix down you see it here in Cubase and other sequencer maybe some different settings you can can use it you put here your example name important the path of the project, you have to choose the right part. So like your your storage and then like Cubase project and then the folder customer project XYZ, I don't know. So I bounce it out as a wave because I work the most time I work with with uh, PC not with uh, uh, Apple system so I work with the Windows system and uh, wave is, is 
I think the best the best file and best compatibility to 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 Apple and all that stuff and other systems. So you can here multi-channel export can use it if you wanna put out all the drums and the snare and the vocals and the rest you say oh no 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 you don't wanna have but at the mix down choose stereo out that some broadcast wave information so only for, for, for the radio stations when you some uh, produce some commercial then you have to use it um, there's the IXML information that's only for my processing that's why I put it in you can uh, put in tempo definition that's important for the beat producers because um, when you are be when you be a beat producer so it's important for the, the the mixing engineer or the mastering engineer to know what tempo the songs what you sound got then please use the tempo definition so we mixing engineers we don't wanna get lose some time to to uh, find what find out what's the tempo of the song is so yeah, it's better than put it in it. Then you have some some output of the audio engine engine settings. So like the sample rate, the bit depth, and if you wanna uh, bounce it on real time. So for a normal CD production, we use uh, forty four point one kilohertz. At post production or a movie and all that stuff, you, they use normally 48. Important, don't use on a CD project 48 because on a CD or uh, on a rep, Sony Rapbook standard are 16 bit from the bit depth and 44.1 uh, kilohertz sample rate. You can when you, if you want, put it on 88.2 because when you then go at the output format with 16 bit and 44.1 kilohertz, you only have to share it with the factor 2 and not with the factor 1.75, uh, 8, 9. You know what I'm saying? Because when you have a when you have an uneven factor, uneven sharing factor, you have the problem, or may you have the problem that you have some artifacts in your audio file because calculation the, would not be exactly like when you have a straight share factor. That's important to know. Oh, what's my window? There's my window. Oh, okay. That's important to know. So, but I use it 44.1 and 20, uh, 32 bit float as a bit depth from the whole project. Mix down. At the end of the tutorial, I want to show you some. project settings so it's important important that you have the right settings yeah first you have the author the company um, that's not important for the um, song production or for mix down of a song okay here uh, choose the sample rate 44 Point one. When you then, then when you work uh, at the post production, you have 48. At the normal CD production, you got 44.1 kilohertz. So then choose the highest bit depth. Not 16. 16 is the output format. Choose the highest. In this case, 20, uh, 30. Uh, in this case, 32 bit float. That's really, really important because when you work uh, with 16 bit and put in a 24 bit file, so then 
you're always processing with the dynamic area or dynamic section of a 16-bit files like 96 EB. So again, if you have if you put in your 16-bit project a few 24-bit file, you don't all you don't have the 144 dB dynamic range, you only have this 96 dB dynamic range. And 16 bit is the output format, so we need the highest resolution as possible for the processing. And then at the end of the processing, we take the file and render it to a 16 bit file. So the, the rendering of, of, uh, um, of the files are exactly a uh, um, 32 bit floating format. So that's really important to know. Um, then you can here chose or choose a, a recording um, recording file type. So I prefer WAV. You can do also broadcast IEFF, WAV 64 or FLAC. Um, the maximum volume plus 6 dB from your faders here. You can use all plus 12. So that was this, the project setting. That's important. And important that when you import files, I show you it at the beginning, that you choose that the files get in copy and convert to your project settings and not your project settings to your files. So that was our third tutorial. The next week we got more tutorials for you. These are only the basics of mixing or massing and processing. And then, then when we got all basics, we do some separate or we do some tutorials about separate topics like file compression like linear or maximum phase equalizer like fat compressor or opto compressor like using the limiter right in a mastering process what does a limiter do what kind of ratio limiter works with and many 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 more so stay tuned check out our website some real real big things are happening in the future on peak studios so uh, we I, I, I can explain you a little bit about it so we um, wanna put in a customer area a big customer area with some uh, FAQs and uh, with a ticket system and many 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 other cool features and check out our support packet, uh, packages and our overnight service what we got on our homepage and if you want to get informed about latest tutorials latest offers and all that stuff go on our site hit on our newsletter or go at your place to and download our peak studios app just type in in your play store peak minus studios and then you got our app so i wish you a nice day until the next time Bye-bye.